When you really plumb the depths of Kurta enthusiasm, eventually you'll find some fanboy who'll tell you that the Kurta can do square roots, or even crazier things. Now, when a stranger tells you that the Kurta can do square roots, they don't really mean what you think they mean. Like, see this calculator? It can do square roots. That's what this thing is for. Okay, fanboy, so where's that thing on the Kurta? Well, you know, like, you gotta understand what I mean, man. Okay, so, like, there's no button on there, see? But, like, the machine is more than just the buttons, man. It's like a whole universe of possibilities, man. It's like the Kurt is like a way of thinking. It's like a lifestyle, man. You can't just ask me for buttons for every little thing. You gotta respect the journey. What this gentleman means is the Kurta doesn't directly do square roots. It only adds, and it subtracts by adding, and it multiplies by adding, and it divides by subtracting. So when someone tells you that the Kurta does square roots, what they really mean is that somebody figured out how to do square roots just by adding and multiplying. And that's true. There are actually several procedures for doing square roots just by adding and multiplying. And it's pretty easy if you know what you're doing. There was an official pamphlet with tables made up for this purpose. The Curta Square Root Tables. I got this scanned from curtamania.com. I'll put a link down there. This may look complicated, but it's pretty easy. You start with a number and you want the square root. That means your number you start with is the square of some other number, like you know n squared and you need to find n. You look in the square root tables to find the closest value you can to what you started with. This is called r squared. And then the table also tells you the value of 1 over 2r. And how about some algebraic nonsense? The approximation at the end is because you choose n and r to be very close together. But you don't need to follow all that. Just trust me that n is approximately equal to n squared plus r squared times 1 over 2r. And all of these things are easy to do with the curta. n squared is what we started with. r squared is the value on the table. And 1 over 2r is the other value on the table. Let's just try the square root of 2. So 2 is my n squared. I look in the table for a value as close to 2 as possible, and I see 1.99496. That's my r squared. So I do the n squared plus the r squared. That's 2 plus 1.99496, and I do that on the curta. Now I multiply this number by 1 over 2r, which is also on the table. It's 354. Now because I need to multiply, I have to manually transfer the current answer. 3.99496 into the input. This step is sometimes a pain, although it's easy in this example. Multiply by 354. Oh boy, look at that. Six digits of accuracy. Here, I'm going to try the square root of 747. I have to think of this as 7.47 and then place the decimals around as needed. I add 7.47, which is the n squared. Look in the table, I see r squared is 7.54740, so I add that. Transfer that back to the input. Now multiply by 1 over r squared, which is 182. Right on! Really, it's just one addition and one multiplication. No problem. The worst part is that step where you have to copy the number on top back into the input. And this is the second time where I see a design deficiency in the curta. Some desktop machines included a back transfer mechanism. This would automatically transfer the value on the answers back into the input. Watch how the numbers at the bottom there are going to get transferred back onto the sliders at the top. This involves using the answer gears to drive the main input gears into a new position, but the Curta can't do that. A back transfer would somehow require the answer wheels to move the input sliders into specific positions. That's just not going to work on the Curta. There's a huge amount of friction in the sliders, and the answer wheels are nowhere near strong enough to push them up and down. So you just got to do it yourself. It's tedious, but not so bad. There were actually some simple tricks to get around the back transfer, but I don't really want to get into that. Would you believe me that there's a very similar trick for cube roots? Turns out you can do the same kinds of algebraic nonsense to show this. And this table for cube roots appears in a book called Curta Calculating Techniques, which I also got from curtamania.com. Again, the table tells you what you need to know. You just have to add r cubed twice, then multiply by 1 over 3r squared. Let's just try the cube root of 451. I add 451. I look up my r cubed is 450.758, so I add that twice. Then the back transfer. And then I multiply by 567. Still got it.
square and cube roots. That's pretty impressive if you got those tables. But really, this is not special to the Curta. These were standard techniques at the time, and anybody with a desktop machine could do these in exactly the same way. Even better if they had a back transfer. But wait, your mansplaining friend says, haven't you heard that the Curta can also calculate any standard mathematical function like sines and cosines, exponentials and logs? The proper response to this gentleman is to politely turn before rolling your eyes. Yes, my friend, the Curta can calculate sines, cosines, logarithms, more or less any function you've ever heard of, as long as you know the Taylor series. Just to placate the mansplainers, let's just try to evaluate the exponential function at x equals 0.75. I'm going to use a fourth degree Taylor polynomial, which any sensible person would write like this. But it's actually more convenient for us to write the coefficients as decimals like this. And here's a cute trick. That thing is the same as this. And I'm going to write that the other way around. And what you see here can just be evaluated left to right by doing additions and multiplications. That means you can do it with the Curta. So I'm going to try to evaluate this at x equals 0.75. This involves four steps of multiplying, adding, and then back transferring each time. It's a bit much for my taste, and I'm not very confident that I did it right. It's kind of close. The accuracy is limited by the Taylor approximation and also by the number of digits I'm maintaining in each step on the Curta. So anyway, the Curta really just does addition and multiplication. Those are the fundamental operations emanating from the soul of the machine itself. Everything else, roots, logs, whatever, these are inventions of men thrust onto the machine with our clumsy fingers. All this business here, I wouldn't call that a curta technique. It is really a mathematical technique. And there is some real beauty there. It's a bit of a deep realization that these other complex operations can be approximated simply by adding and multiplying. And as someone who appreciates this kind of beauty, do I want to try another example? I do not.